So as you guys are new students, you you are you probably are already aware of our arrival services. So when you do land in Canada, um, we have airport greeters to meet you at the airport, um, and to and we provide transportation from Toronto to London. Um, we again, as part of our arrival services package, we do provide two nights of accommodation if you need that uh, to help you kind of get started with looking for where to live. Um, we do have banking help if needed, so we can kind of direct you to um, the, a, bank, a bank branch that's nearby to the college. And we also do have our international welcome sessions. Uh, so again, um, there's lots of help for you when you first arrive. Make sure you attend one of the welcome sessions. We'll introduce you to lots of services and people from the office that are, that are here to help you. And just about the free accommodation, you're not going to be staying at a five-star Hyatt hotel, okay? It's a very simple, humble accommodation at a couple of the motels in the city. There is a more exclusive uh, property you can stay at, but that's going to cost you money. The free accommodation, I just want to make sure that you understand, it's not going to be high-end. It's just comfortable and close to the campus. So here is our first look actually at our campus here on Oxford Street. Um, so this would be, um, so if you're attending to this campus, that gives you a good idea of what it would look like. It's quite a large campus. Um, on top of that, we do have the downtown campuses as well. So if you're doing hospitality or media, you might be at one of the downtown campuses. Um, I, we did, I did see a student uh, asking already a question about the London South Campus. So that's our new campus, which is opening in September. Um, so it's in the south part of the city. Uh, so it's still within London. Um, it's just in a little bit of a different area of the city. Um, it's a great area in terms of accommodation as there's not a lot of students already kind of tapped into that accommodation market. So you should have an okay time finding somewhere to live near the South Campus, and it's really close to a lot of malls and restaurants, so it should be really great for shopping and finding part-time work. Um, so yeah, so there should be a lot going on with the new London South Campus. Um, and we also do have regional campuses in St. Thomas, Woodstock, and Simcoe. Um, so these are actual different towns. Um, so if you're going to one of those campuses, you won't be actually in London, you'll be in St. Thomas, Woodstock, or Simcoe. Um, so it's a good idea to make sure that you know which campus you're going to be attending before you get here so that you look for accommodation and everything in the right areas. Someone mentioned they're taking the drone program, um, Reno from Brazil. The, uh, that's at the airport campus. And the airport campus is also on Oxford Street. It's actually at the airport. Uh, and there is a bus that goes directly from Fanshawe College to the airport. It also runs along Oxford Street. Uh, the two downtown campuses, they face each other. So if you're in media, you're on one side of the street. If you're in hospitality or IT, you're on the other side of the street. Um, the buses just want students to also know there is no bus that goes from London to St. Thomas or from London to Woodstock. So if you are going to those cities, you don't want to be finding accommodation here in London because you cannot do a daily commute. You'd have to be actually living in those cities and they're beautiful cities. Yeah, so it, just to reiterate, it's really important to know which campus you're headed to so that you're living and looking in the right areas for, for your housing and all the supports that you're going to be looking for. And it's probably a little bit cheaper in the South, for the South campus students. I would imagine, yeah. Uh, that side of the city renting may be a little bit cheaper than if you live in the North. One of the main reasons for the North being a bit more expensive is the university is located in the North end of the city. And so a lot of the university students and professors and students in master's programs, they may pay more than a college student would for an apartment. So the apartments in the North End are a little bit more expensive than if you're in the South. So there are some different accommodation options. So we do have a residence here on campus. Um, we have options of living in homestay, which means that you would live with a Canadian family. We do find a, most of our students do look at off-campus um, housing, so whether you would rent a room or a house with other students. Um, so again, um, a good place to check is our college website. There's an off-campus housing list. Um, on, or once you arrive, kind of connecting with other students and trying to find a, a, an to a shared accommodation with them. 
Okay, and someone is asking me again about the uh, pick up with the accommodations. It is free for you. If you bring your husband with you, um, he would have to pay for the bus. He would also have to pay his own room stay. If you email accommodation at Fanshawe Cares at FanshaweC.ca, all of that information would have been sent to you also. You can let the person know that you are bringing family with you because you would have to make arrangements to pay for his ride to London and his hotel stay. Um, if you're coming late, again, you have to let someone know you're arriving late and we need to know your flight time in order to be able to have you picked up at the airport. Um, about accommodation, again, most students may not stay in residence because it is not mandatory that you stay on the campus. Um, as Laura said, Kijiji, a lot of students are finding apartments on Kijiji or LondonRental.ca, or you can just wait till you get here and then you probably will find someone, maybe from your home country, maybe from your program, that you can start looking at uh, sharing accommodation with. And another great suggestion for the student who's coming with your husband or, or other family members, we do have another session like this next week that we'll be looking at specifically at bringing family with you and the, uh, the added uh, information you might want to know about that. And just uh, someone is asking, is the Oxford campus the main campus? Yes, it is. Uh, we are the largest campus, I should say, because it may not be the main campus, but it's the largest campus. Um, our next slide here is just showing you what the buses look like here in, in London. Um, the bus pass is included it, with, your, with your tuition as long as you're a full-time student. So your student card is your bus pass. Um, the, London, the LTC, it's called, they do have a really great app that can help you get, get around. So if you have some time before you arrive, it would be a really great idea to download that app to your phone. Basically, you can touch, you can get onto that app and they'll tell you when the next, next bus is coming based on where you are in the city. So you, you can't really get too lost as long as you have that, that app on your phone. And note the, um, the rack at the front of the bus means you can take your bicycle with you. Some students will have a bicycle, they will simply mount it to the front of the bus. Um, and I know students, again, who are at the airport campus, who simply take the bus to the main campus, take their bicycles off, and then they ride the rest of the way to the airport. So lots of ways to be creative in terms of how you get around um, in the city. And the bus pass is good seven days a week. Um, holidays, there is no limit on when and how you use your bus pass. And just, uh, just to kind of, um, I know Cynthia talked about the cheap bikes before and then you, there's somebody asking a quick question about that. Um, so you can get a cheap, again, there's um, cheap bikes you can find on used um, websites like Kijiji where there might be somebody selling a bike that they don't need anymore. Um, even I think the college has, the FSU has a marketplace where you could again look for maybe a student who's trying to sell a bike that they're not using anymore. Um, so buying secondhand would be the cheapest way to get, a, to get a bike fairly cheaply. I just want to mention, as Laura mentioned secondhand, um, one of the things you can enjoy also in London, I think that's really cool. In many countries, you don't have this. You could do a lot of secondhand shopping. You can buy a bicycle, you can get your helmet, you can get a desk, you can get a lamp, you can get a winter jacket, things like skating in the city, skateboards. You know, these are all sort of excessive things. You can look at a lot of uh, discount shopping and when you get to the campus, any of us would be happy to tell you the different places you can go and get a lot of things secondhand at a minimum cost as compared to buying things brand new. And you never have to feel ashamed in Canada that you've bought something secondhand. Some people buy every single thing they own secondhand. And we can talk more about that once you get here. Um, one, one thing to add with the secondhand thing, if you're going to be a student and you know you're going to be here for one or two years, secondhand is great because, you know, you're not spending a lot of money on something that you might just end up leaving behind. And biking in London weather? Yes, there are people who bike right through the winter until ice on the road becomes too dangerous. You just have to have the right clothing and just be safe. But yes, you can bike in the winter. So we're going to move on to healthcare. Um, so one thing to note is as international students, your fees cover your health insurance. So you will have health insurance as long as you're enrolled full-time at the college, you do have health, insu health insurance. 
It's through a company called Morecare. Um, so when you arrive, we'll give you the details about how to print out your health card um, and how to use, how to access those services. We do have an on-campus medical clinic. So that's a really, that's probably your best way to see a doctor. Um, they do divide their day by appointments and by walk-in times. So um, if you wake up and you're sick one day, you may be able to get one of the walk-in appointments. Um, or if you need something more routine, you can book an appointment with the on-campus medical clinic. Um, they work directly with the health insurance company, which means you don't need to pay anything. You just basically show them your student card and your more care card, and you can see the doctor there for free. There are off-campus walk-in clinics that do the same thing, but in a lot of those cases, you need to pay the walk-in clinic first and then claim the money back through the insurance company. So it does give you kind of an extra step to get your money back, um, which you, it's an extra step you don't need to do at the on-campus clinic. Um, another really important thing to think to know about healthcare in Canada is the, where you go kind of depends on how sick you are. So if you have something like a cold or a flu where you need some medicine or maybe an antibiotic, for those types of illnesses, you'd want to go to a walk-in clinic. Um, if you go to a hospital with something like that, you will end up waiting a very long time at the hospital. Hospitals in Canada see the sickest person first. Um, so they kind of, they do what they call triage. So they see whoever needs help the fastest they see them first so if you come in there with a minor um, illness you'll end up waiting a very long time and um, if you do arrive uh, let's say the middle of August or the third week of August your card isn't yet active your insurance is not yet active however if you do visit a doctor keep your receipts with you because once your more care card is activated you can then request reimbursement. You can submit the receipts and get the money repaid. Yes, you are covered um, up to 30 days before your program starts. So if you are here early and something happens, you do have coverage, you just won't have your card yet. I just want to mention one thing because some students have said to me in September, they think they have a really bad cold. And in fact, it's what we call in Canada seasonal allergies. So come September, when the fall season has started, a lot of people will start with stuffy noses, runny eyes, um, sore throats. You may not be ill at all. You simply have what we call seasonal allergies. And I only say that so you don't run to the hospital right away thinking you're coming down with something horrible. It very well could be seasonal allergies. And in the country where you live, you don't have those trees. You don't have those, that kind of pollen uh, floating around. You arrive in Canada, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, where all of a sudden you realize you're allergic to something in the environment. You're not really sick. It's just an allergy, and it goes away. So I know a lot of students come, and one of the first priorities is looking for a part-time job. So there is going to be a job fair on September the 24th. Um, at the Western Fair District, which is fairly close to the college. So that might be something that you'll be interested in checking out um, once you arrive and just trying to see the types of jobs that are available in the London area um, for maybe even after you graduate, just to get a sense as to the labor market here and what people are looking for. And we don't want to get into jobs at the moment because this is not the point of this um, session. However, it's important to know you must have a social insurance number in order to work and you cannot get that number through Fenchel College. That's through a totally different area. You may get it at the airport when you arrive, but if you don't, then someone will be here on campus for two days to help you with getting a social insurance number or SIN number as you might know it. So you do need that in order to work and that is not active until the 10th, after the 10th day of class. Is that correct, Laura? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you can start working until after the 10th day of class. We'll move on to shopping in London. So London's a good place to shop. Um, the first picture there is of the market, which is in downtown London, the Covent Garden Market. Um, so there's lots of fresh, um, if you're looking for fresh fruits and vegetables and, and butcher meats, um, that's a really good place to go for those. Um, there's also really nice coffee shops and, and things in within the market. Uh, so that's a good place to visit. And then the other two pictures are of 
it's kind of the, the two bigger malls in, in London. So there's Masonville Place, which is kind of in the northern part of the city. And the picture at the uh, kind of in the bottom corner there is White Oaks Mall. So for, if you're going to the South Campus, that's probably where you'll end up spending a lot of your, your, your time and money because that mall is right across the road from the London South Campus. Right. And the market is, is just behind the um, London Downtown Campus. So if you are again in hospitality, IT or media programs, the, it's called the Covent Garden Market, fashioned around the Covent Garden Market in, in the United Kingdom, in England. And it's nothing like that. However, it's a really cute farmer's market. It's a, across from the Budweiser Gardens, which is a huge, um, what do you call it? Arena. Auditorium, arena for um, first class performances, basketball, hockey, um, and in front of the London, the Covent Garden Market also in the winter, there's skating. Students, if you can purchase a pair of skates or rent skates, there's ice skating at the front. And it's a really beautiful place to go on a Saturday morning and just have a coffee and watch how the local merchants sell their goods, basically. A lot of students would also find jobs at the malls. So Masonville Mall, White Oaks Mall, if you're at the main campus, there's another huge mall, just about an eight minute bus ride. Argyle Mall and a lot of the students will go to the malls to look for work in retail. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind also. Okay. And, to the next one. and Cynthia was just talking about Budweiser Gardens and that's the first picture there is of a hockey game at Budweiser Gardens. So um, as she mentioned there's sports there, there's also um, lots of concerts and stuff that you can attend at Budweiser Gardens. Um, the other the other sport that's popular that's played there is basketball. So we have our own the London Lightning as the basketball team here in London, um, and it's possible to go and watch one of those games fairly cheaply mm -hmm. um, uh, anytime that you're if you're interested in that sort of thing. And the other picture above that of the soccer field is at uh, BMO, uh, which is the indoor soccer fields here in London. There's also a lot of opportunity to play soccer outdoors um, if, if that's something that you're interested in. And I've seen the students playing cricket this past weekend. They go to the big parks downtown. They've got their bats. They've got their ball. They don't have any wickets, if you know what cricket is. But a lot of students would also form their own teams and do their own sort of uh, just recreational cricket. Uh, the Budweiser Gardens, which is, and you're seeing, is, is that a hockey game? It's a I hockey so. game. Yeah. The fascinating thing about it is it's an ice rink for hockey. And then two weeks later, there's a basketball game and it becomes a wooden floor for basketball. So it's a very, um, it's a creative way they've used the stadium. And um, the Fancher Student Union very often has tickets free or at really cheap prices. And I strongly encourage you when you arrive in September I think it's the basketball season mm. is on then and then it sort of goes into hockey please try to go to one of the gates a lot of students also have jobs working at the Budweiser Gardens um, I asked them how did you get that job they said they simply went down and filled out an application form and they're working doing cleanup they're working in ticket sales they're working in security so it's a great place to also look for part-time work and it's directly across from the market and very close to the downtown campus, like a two minute walk from the downtown campus. So I are getting some students asking questions kind of over and over again in the chat here. We will do all the questions um, just at the, at the very end. We'll get through the presentation and then we'll come back to your questions. So don't worry, we will answer them. Just we'll get through the presentation first. Um, London's also a great place if you're looking, if you're interested in museums and libraries. So the library is a great way to, uh, you know, to get books and even some, you know, if you like to rent video games or um, movies even from the library. So it's a great way to kind of get some free entertainment that you can borrow and then return. Um, our campus library is the same idea. They have movies and video games that you can also rent as, aside from your course materials. Uh, and then there's, yeah, there's lots of different live um, museums that you can check out as well. Um, a lot of the museums are free to check out. Uh, so if, if you want to look at some Canadian history or art or get a good sense of um, the city, th those are good places to start. And the, the museum in the picture here, it's close to the river downtown. We showed you some scenes of the river. And that, that's such a beautiful place in September. The bright tree at the front of it you know it's fall season because the trees have now turned from green to golden to red. 
I strongly encourage when you get here, go to the library, rent one of the beautiful cameras. They have like state-of-the-art phot uh, photography equipment where you can do videos, you could do, you know, your own um, photography collection as students call it, and send to your parents so they can see how the seasons are changing. The library is really convenient, this library in the picture for students at the downtown campus, because you don't really have a library within that building. And the London Public Library is open until I think 10 o'clock at night, um, every day. So for students who are at the downtown campus, I encourage you to get a membership there and you can use that as your beautiful rooms for studying. Um, there's so much happening and in that library, there are also free shows that they sometimes do and free events. So familiarize yourself with the public libraries and definitely that museum is free. There is no charge uh, for being at the, at the museum. So a lot of students are always a little bit nervous about the winter because um, maybe you haven't been in a really cold place before. Um, so one thing to note is winter is cold, but there are some fun things that you can do and some things you can try. Um, so the first picture there is skating trails at Storybook Gardens, but there's also skating in Victoria Park. Um, and then there's also tobogganing or tubing, which is happening in the picture below. Um, so ways to kind of get out and enjoy the snow. It is important, I mean, obviously to dress for these events. If you go skating and you're, and you're not dressed warmly enough, you won't have a good time. But uh, as long as you're dressed warmly with a hat, coat and mittens, um, you should be able to get out and enjoy, enjoy the winter. Um, one nice thing about coming in September is it'll gradually get colder instead of just walking into it being really cold. So you do have lots of time to kind of prepare and shop um, for, for the winter clothes that you might need. And I can tell you, you will love it the first time you see snow. You'll think it's absolutely beautiful. You'll be sending pictures and doing all your selfies and everything. By December, you will not be so happy and you will not be enjoying the winter. <laughs> then you'll get used to it. You'll have a winter break in December. Maybe you have two weeks off around the Christmas time. You come back in January, you'll hate winter even more. But then you learn to love it again. Because <laughs> if you're gonna to choose to live in Canada, you have to learn how to have fun in the winter because it is a long period and some students suffer from what we call um, seasonal affective disorder. They no longer see sunlight. You're from a country where it's 30, 40 degrees almost every day of the year and the sun shines. In the winter, the days are shorter. We talked about in the summer, the sun sets sometimes 9.30. It's still bright in the summertime. In the winter by 4 o'clock, 4.30, it's dark outside. So you leave home in the dark, you go home in the dark. So you gotta learn to have some fun with it. Tobogganing is free. If you can buy a toboggan again uh, on Kijiji and thrift store, and if you have children, they love it. But even grown-ups love tobogganing. Um, and you go down the slopes, just be safe, get a helmet. Victoria Park is the park at the top where you're seeing the uh, lighted, uh, the lit Christmas trees. Beautiful place in the winter time. And you, again, they're skating there every night. So if you bought a pair of skates, you'll fall down, um, but you have fun. And it's a great way to stay fit and really enjoy, enjoy the winter time because it is a long period. And no flip-flops. If you're coming from a country where you wear a lot of flip-flops, you cannot wear socks and flip-flops in the winter time. Mm -hmm. okay, but we'll go to the other side of this. So there's also the summer. Um, so one thing about Canada is we do have four very distinct seasons. So when you come, we'll be coming into fall and into the, and then obviously into the colder winter months and then through spring. And then right now we're in the summer where, so a lot of students are kind of surprised at how hot Canada can be. Um, right now, I mean, most of our days are around 30 degrees. Um, so we're close to beaches. Um, the pictures here are of Port Stanley and, or Grand Bend, which are two big beaches that are within, a, uh, say, 40 minutes to an hour from London. Um, and I know right now there are some companies that are running buses every day to those beach areas. So, so it's really easy to get to them if you're, you know, you're hot and you want to cool down. The beaches are a good place to do that. Um, and also London is a really great city for festivals in the summer. So there are also things like um, Sunfest is a big festival in early July. Um, last weekend was just Rib Festival, which is again, um, basically the parks are full of food and shopping and music uh, on most, weekends, yeah, most weekends during the summer. Outdoor movies in the parks. 
Oh yeah, there's the the parks also do a lot of movies. So um, in the evenings they'll play. Yeah, a lot of the parks do it now. So you can go to lot, each. You can get schedules of which park is playing which movies. Um, it's not just even weekends. Sometimes they have uh, movies playing in the park on week weeknights. So they're totally free. You just bring a blanket or a chair and sit down and watch. And they're fairly current current new release movies as well. There is one other festival coming in September when you're here. Um, it's, I don't think it's free, though. If anybody likes hip-hop, um, it's Ice, 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 Tea? Ice, Cube? Ice Cube Ice Cube, and Busta Rhymes and a few other hip-hop artists. That's going to be at Harris Park, again, which is downtown by the river. Um, it's September 12th, and that's probably from 5 in the evening until midnight, till 11. In Canada, at 11, all music has to stop in outdoor places. That's unusual for many of you in the countries you're from. The music just goes till whenever. But here at 11 o'clock, actually the police will come to your door if you are having a house party and you're way too loud and it's now 11 at night, a neighbor can report you to the police. So I would say um, if you can do that concert, by all means, you can again research it when you get here. And what Laura is speaking about is awesome because it's free. I'm really stressing free. All the concerts at Victoria Park are free concerts. So you do want to take advantage of them. Yes, yeah, so the hip hop night that Cynthia is talking about is actually through something called Park Jam. So there's actually five nights, I think, of different okay. concerts. So there's a hip hop night, there's a rock night, there's like an alternative music night. I think there's a country music night. So if so, depending on what kind of music you like, um, they are all happening. Yeah, early September. I think the first one starts on the fifth and goes mm -hmm. through to the twelfth. Um, so there is a, that's in Harris Park. Now those concerts are probably about sixty-five dollars a ticket, um, but they, but yeah, the, it's an option if you're looking for something to do right when you first arrive. And I just I was going to say the beaches are also still accessible because in September the beach is still beautiful. Some of you would also be coming maybe the third week of August. If you can find a way to get to Grand Bend or to Port Stanley, it's absolutely beautiful just to see, because these are lakes, these are not oceans. And when you see them, you will swear it's an ocean you're looking at, it's not a lake. Um, you can also go in the winter time. It's nice to take pictures to see what something looks like in the fall, what it looks like in the winter, what it looks like in the spring, and what it looks like in the summer. And all of these beaches we talk about, uh, you can still try them out. I don't think you're going to the water because it's pretty cold, but it's great to walk along the sand and uh, just take some nice pictures. And you also always attend some parks things, the international parks on LondonTourism.ca. So LondonTourism.ca is a website that apparently you can go on and you'll see a list of all the activities at the public activities. If you're here also the middle of August, there is a beautiful jazz, it's in the streets, it's a place called Wortley Village, and it's, um, it's just artists and arts and people and fantastic music. It's all free, and that's August 18th in Wortley Village. So again, if you're arriving in Canada, say around the 15th of August, and you want to go to something free and see what Canadians do for fun in the summer, just come up to the office and anyone here can tell you a little bit about where to go and how to access that music festival. Another thing that will be happening pretty much as soon as you arrive is the Western Fair. Um, so this is a great place if you want to get a lot of junk food and maybe go on an amusement park ride uh, or play games. Um, and they also do have some concerts and stuff happening as part of the fair as well. Um, again, this does, the fair is not free. Um, you would have to pay money to get into it and then pay, probably pay money for rides and games and food and all of that. Um, but it is something that if you're interested in that sort of thing, it, it will be happening right away when you first, when you first get here. And especially for those with young children, you know, you may want to take your, I mean, again, as Laura said, it's not free, but I think the kids love it. Um, Laura mentioned junk food. That's another fun thing in Canada. Um, <laughs> we don't encourage it for an extended period of time, but, you know, you've heard about poutine. So I'm, I'm looking at the first slide there and I'm seeing cheese fries and I'm seeing, seeing chicken in a pita. There's so many different street foods you can also buy in Canada. And along Richmond Street, which is where um, most of the clubs, the pubs, the bars, the coffee shops are. When you first arrive and you have time, you know, go down in the evenings on Richmond Street and just try some of the different street foods that you see selling there. They're all, they're all safe. 
you're not going to get a runny stomach from eating street food in Canada. Okay, so just a few quick things to wrap up. So the arrival services, so if you are looking to be met at the airport and, and brought to London, the, those arrival dates are the August 18th to the 30th. Um, and on August the 30th, we're going to have our international welcome session. So it's kind of like an orientation to the college where you'll get to kind of meet us in person and learn about some of the different services that are here at the school. Um, September the 2nd is a holiday in Canada. So right before you start school, the college will actually be closed the day before school starts as kind of like a goodbye summer long weekend. Um, and September 3rd is the orientation. So that's when your program orientations will be. So on the 30th, you kind of get to meet us and get a look around the school. Um, and on the 3rd, you'll get to meet your teachers and your program coordinators and get a good idea about your program that you're studying in. And then on the 4th, your classes will start. Uh, so that first week will kind of pass very quickly and you'll get a lot of information very quickly during that, during that time. Right, and during that week, um we will have representatives, whichever country you're from, there will be someone here in the International Center from that country. So whether you want to speak to someone in your own language or you just want to touch base with someone from, if you're from Africa or from Brazil or the Philippines, Vietnam, India, the Caribbean, it doesn't really matter where you're from, there will be a representative from your country here in the International Center. Um, I want to mention Labor Day, the buses do run, although it's a holiday. It probably runs on a different schedule, but will their bus pass be working? Should be, I think, by the first. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, but if, if you if you can rent a car, it's a good time to rent a car on Labor Day and maybe go to the beach or go to Toronto. You want to be back for orientation on the third, so don't go too far. But definitely Labor Day is probably the last day before Thanksgiving, which is in October. Um, I just want to mention the big holidays. There's Labor Day in September. We have Thanksgiving, October, early October. Early October. That's another holiday for you. And then there are no other holidays again until the Christmas break. So Labor Day might be your last day to really be free and, and just enjoy some free time before the rigors of your classes begin. And we are open on Labor Day. Are we not? Uh, no, I think we're not. No. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, the college will be closed. Oh, yeah. It says that. The college is closed, so if you arrive on Labor Day, don't come up to the International Center to get registered. You have to have been here the day before or the day after Labor Day. There's lots of ways to keep in contact with us. So here's some of our social media. Um, so yeah, join, join us on social media and follow us. It's really good on like Facebook, our international page, for example, like in those in the winter, if there is a day where the college is closed due to lots of snow or whatever, then uh, we would mention that on our social media. So that's a really good reason to to be involved. Also, if we're looking for, you know, um, students to work for us or do any kind of volunteering or anything like that for special events, we would probably mention those on our Facebook pages as well. So they're really good reasons to join our, our social media just to make sure that you're connected to everything that's happening here at the school. At this time, we'll take we'll take a few questions, um, and then if there's any more after that, you can always email us. Um, I did notice one student who was asking about co-op and how much money you would make. Um, so co-ops are paid for the most part. Um, there's that's the idea is that, that they would be a paid full-time work placement. Um, now, obviously, the wages will range depending on how much the company that you're doing the co-op with, how much they want to pay you. Um, so I guess at least you'd be at least making minimum wage, which is about $14 an hour. Um, but I've seen some co-op students making more than that, depending on where their co-op is, is um, maybe $18 to $20 an hour if you were doing something um, more technical or more skilled, um, it's possible to make more than that. And if you are coming for a co-op program and your letter of admission says that, you may want to mention it to the airport when you do your um, immigration entry because then they can grant you a co-op work permit at that point. If it's not given, we will help you to do that once you arrive. We do have three people in the office who can assist with any immigration related questions. Um, just want to go from the bottom up. Someone mentioned about Robert Q. Yes, the Robert Q bus, if you are greeted by Robert Q, will bring you directly to one of the motels if you are arriving in the evening. 
Yeah. If it's during the daytime, I think they come to the college. Okay. Do they not? Okay. Yeah. The International Center registration is where you need to come once you arrive here at Fanshawe with your letter of admission, your study permit, and in the office here, we will get you registered, get your documents copied, and uh, then you can get your student card. The average temperature in the winter could be anywhere from one degree to minus 25. Mm -hmm. There's also a great thing called wind chill. So, so if it tells you that it's, it might tell you that it's minus 20, but with the wind chill, it'll feel like minus 30. It just means that the, the wind is, co is cold. And it's gonna make it feel colder than the actual standing air temperature. So it is kind of hard in the winter to say what the average temperature is because a lot of times they'll, you might hear this, like the, the temperature, but the wind chill factor could make it feel much colder. Okay, um, orientation day, it's for, it, it, it is scheduled, it is a full day of activities for students who are new to the college. So it probably starts at nine in the morning and runs until maybe three in the afternoon. It is imperative and really important that you be here for orientation. Your class orientation is different. That is also mandatory. That's where you get to meet your professors, your program is discussed, you know more about your textbooks, any laptops, any, anything at all that's important for your success um, will be discussed at your program orientation. Someone is asking about, um, does, uh, does the bus run late at night? The bus runs until like one kind of, yeah. Depending on which route it is, sometime from 9.30 to 12. Okay, so I'm being told that depending on the route, it may go until 12 o'clock. Some routes will stop at nine. Right. So like college route stops around 10, the downtown ones will stay around 12, 12.30. So okay. depending on how busy the area is, they go longer, yeah. Okay, a lot of students also take Uber. Like if you happen to be at the library and it's now midnight, um, you can take an Uber. It's really cheap to take an Uber here in Canada, um, and it's convenient and it is safe. Okay. So there's a student asking if they should bring their resumes from your home country. It's a good idea to bring what you've been using, but most likely you're going to want to visit career services here and have them have a look at it and maybe Canadianize your resume. Maybe the format that you use in your country might be a little bit different than the format that a Canadian employer would be looking at like we'll be looking for, but it is a good idea to bring it just so that they know kind of your work experience and your education history to help you kind of revamp that into a Canadian resume. Okay. And if they're coming around August 26th, we have Fanshawe Works, the right. resume workshop for four days that they can attend to make it right. Okay, and remember when you look for work, work is the gravy on your food. The main purpose of coming is for study. Don't come and get preoccupied with finding a job immediately. You really need to figure out your classes, your schedule, your, 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 you know, how you handle the workload before you start looking for work. A lot of questions here about accommodation. Robert Q will allow you to bring the same amount of luggage as the airline allowed you to use. If you bring more than that, then you do have to pay extra. Um, this is my fan card. Your fan card is your bus pass, but it may not be usable in the early part of August. I think it's more towards mid to the end of August, the driver will allow you to use your fan card um, because it may not be activated by then. If you are getting a late visa, someone asked that, you can't just get your visa late and show up. You have to let your, your agent or your country representative know that your visa is not yet approved and you have to get permission to come late. The question had also asked, should I defer? I would highly recommend you defer your admission. The money is deferred if you don't have your visa and it's already the third week of August. So yeah, you probably can wait a little bit longer, but if you don't have it, you'll definitely want to get in contact with, with your agent to, to defer your program. Okay. Um, how do I know where to go on my first day of class? Every You will have your timetable long before your, your classes begin and the room number is indicated on your timetable. We also have an orientation schedule, so if you're not sure where your program orientation is, when you register with us, we can let you know where that where that is for the September 3rd orientations. We do have the full schedule as well. Someone is asking, what kind of shoes can I buy uh, from India? Um, any shoe with a leather sole or a rubber sole is totally fine. 
don't bring too many pairs of shoes with you. You may want to shop when you get here. I just say flip-flops because I see students um, from different countries wearing flip-flops in the winter and that is not good. So you can maybe just, whatever shoe you're wearing in India, I'm sure you can wear when you get here. And then maybe you look at buying another pair of shoes. Running shoes, Canadians love wearing running shoes because they're convenient. You can wear them out in the winter, you can wear them in the summer, and they're not that expensive. Um, so with, with regards to lots of students asking questions about the fan card, uh, so that, that's your student card. So once you come here and register with us, then we'll take you down to get your picture taken and get in your fan card will be printed out on the spot. So you will get it once you get here. May I come to the college before classes start to ask? You're welcome to come at any time. The International Center is open Monday to Friday. Fridays, we close at four o'clock. Um, we open at nine o'clock in the morning and we are located in E2025. And you're welcome to come at any time when you arrive. Let them know you're a new student. Someone also asked, what do I need to bring to register? We need your passport, we need your study permit and your letter of admission for us to get you registered. Advanced communication, your campus is on the Oxford Street campus. Yep. And someone asked about gerontology. Your campus is also at the Oxford Street campus. The college gym, that's another good point to bring up because in terms of having fun again at a good cost, the gym membership is free. So if you are enrolled full-time attending classes, you have access to the gym. And the gym hours are, I think it's probably open till, I'm going to say pretty late. And with the gym, you have your rock climbing, you've got squash courts, you've got basketball, you've got the cricket teams also. You can come and register to play. Uh, some of our international students are fantastic with our college soccer team because in many countries, soccer is the top sport. So if you know you're good in whatever sport, be it basketball, badminton, volleyball, soccer, golf, when you arrive, go directly to the athletics department and tell them you'd like to try out for one of the varsity teams or the intramural teams. But ping pong is again available, table tennis, all of those things are at the gym and highly recommended as a way to stay fit and just to have a little bit of fun and to de-stress. There's a question here from somebody who's going to be studying at the Simcoe campus and asking if they can get their fan card in London. So you can do that. The only thing is you would have to have your own transportation between the Simcoe campus and the London campus. Um, Simcoe is probably the furthest one of the regional campuses from London. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away. Um, now, I, I actually go to the Simcoe campus once a month to meet with the students who are studying there. So um, while you're studying there, you'll probably see a lot of me. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, you can, still, you can still access all the services that are here in London. It's just, you have to get to London. So you can do the fan card and everything from the Simcoe campus. So depending on whether you're going to have a car and how easy it's going to be for you to get around, you may just choose to go to the Simcoe campus and they can do the card from there as well. Um, so yeah, everything that you can do here, you can do there. Um, and, but if you do want to come up here for some reason, do it, you can. You're just going to be traveling an hour and a half to do so um, there and back. And so. there is no bus from Simcoe to London. That's right. right? Yeah. You so would have to have definitely a car. Have, have, you would need a car to get from Simcoe to London. Uh, just, um, sorry, no tennis courts and no pool here at the campus, but there is a pool pretty close to the campus where if you have your student card, you're allowed to use. There are a lot of tennis courts in the city that are free. So if you brought your tennis racket and you wanted to get some um, tennis balls, and a lot of those courts will be free and maybe open until October. They're beautiful tennis courts and they're all free for anyone to go and play. A lot of questions about coming with a family and more care. Yeah. Your family is not included in your more care, but you can purchase additional um, insurance for family members. The, the, web, the webinar next week talks about coming with your family so perhaps if you have questions about family, insurance, pick up at the airport and all that, you may want to join the webinar next week to get those questions, any family related questions answered. Um, the, the, what, is, what is the app for the bus? The, the uh, LTC, my LTC. My, the, 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 someone is asking about the app for the bus. It's my LTC. My LTC for Android. 
for like the Android. Yes, yeah, so if you have an Android phone, it's called My LTC, and if you have iPhone, it's LT Watch. just LT Watch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can extend the study permit once you're here. We have uh, immigration workshops we do weekly for students who need to extend the study permit, um, apply for a co-op work permit, or any other sort of um, immigration related needs you have, whether it's for yourself or for your spouse. There are workshops held weekly at the main campus, at the downtown campus, and Laura goes to Simcoe if you are at that campus. Um, another student asking about free classes for things like French or Spanish. Um, at the college, they don't really offer that. Um, you might be able to do it, depending on your program, you might be able to do a gen ed, like a general education credit in Spanish or some other language as well. Um, I think if you're looking for French, um, we do find a lot of students who come in with that idea that they're gonna learn French as well. Um, French is not as widely spoken as you might think, um, and you may be looking at libraries or community groups to do, to do those types of things for free. Um, there's obviously ways that you can do it if you want to pay for it, um, but I think a lot of students have found that it's, it's a lot harder work than they thought it was mm -hmm. going um, to be to learn French while they're also studying full-time, um, and also that you'd be paying to do that as well. Um, Fanshawe does offer some French classes through continuing ed, but it's all done online, which in my opinion Opinion is probably not the best way to learn another language um, by doing online classes but they do exist if you were interested in doing those and you would have to pay at least four hundred dollars for those courses yeah um, I want to mention something we have something on campus called the Pancho Student Union the FSU when you get here again we're talking about fun in Canada you definitely want to visit the FSU because the FSU has a lot of free activities movies shows daily activities in the in one of the um halls here at Fanshawe and they have outdoor activities they have their strawberry ice cream days there's so much stuff that the FSU will provide free of charge to students if there are concerts you get discounted concert tickets it's also a great place to look for part-time work um, and that's something you want to definitely you know take advantage of once you arrive you can come and ask any of us here where do I find a Fanshawe Student Union? But it's another great place to learn about fun things to do at Fanshawe and in the city, um, and also look for part-time work through the FSU. They also usually do a, a Niagara Falls trip pretty quickly, and it's sometime in late, like probably mid-September, they'd be doing a trip to Niagara Falls. Usually they cost about 20 to $25, and they drive you there in the bus, give you the whole day to do what you want, and, and bring you back. So they usually organize one of those pretty quickly at the start of the year. And because they do get full pretty quickly, so it's easier to check out the whole calendar in advance on fsu.ca. So did All you get the that? events that they organize. FSU.ca. You definitely want to go on that. Um, maybe not yet. Around the middle of August, they will have their calendar up and running for the fall. Laura mentioned Niagara Falls. And if you can go there when you first arrive, that's beautiful. Then you try to go again, maybe in October around Thanksgiving, because then the trees are changing. And then you definitely want to go in the winter and see what the fall looks like at winter time. Again, uh, students can rent a car. It's not that expensive to rent a car in Canada once you have your international driver's license. And um, just take a trip to Niagara Falls, two hours you're there, two hours you're back, um, worth the trip. Um, so another question about the Fanshawe Works, that's only gonna be here at the main campus. Um, so if you're at any of the other campuses, you could come in and take part in it here, um, but it is only at the Oxford Street campus. And library membership, it is free. None of the libraries um, charge you anything. If, you're, if you borrow books and they're late, of course you pay a fine. However, uh, the library membership is free. And somebody asked me about sports teams. Um, again, this is something we'll kind of go over in our, orient in our orientation once you get here. But yeah, there's loads of opportunities to join Fanshawe sports teams. So there's the varsity teams, which you have to try out for, and they're, com they're really competitive. So they play against other colleges. But there's also lots of really fun, just for fun ones, you can sign up with friends or just sign up as, a, as an individual to be on an intramural team, which means that you just play um, other teams within the college, and it's more of a just for fun um, just for fun league. Um, 
Another question is about the motel. So yeah, we pay for the first two nights of the motel. If you want to stay there, if you need to stay there longer or want to stay there longer, you can. It will cost you um, some money to do that. I'm not sure the exact rate. I guess probably about 60, like 50 to 60, 50 to 60 dollars a night if you wanted to keep staying at the motel. Okay. There is no college band. Um, there is a program we have called Music Industry Arts. Those are the students maybe that would be the ones doing any sort of music activities on campus, but we don't have a music band on campus. If you like salsa dancing, there are a lot of groups in the city that have free salsa classes. Um, just again, thinking of something fun that students can do. Um, the university also has a lot of free concerts. The university has a, um, when you get here, I strongly recommend you also pay a visit to Western University because they have a lot of activities that are free of charge for, for students, whether you're a Western student or a Pancho student. Simcoe, why is my- Yeah, so I'm not sure if there's another student going to Simcoe campus wondering why their schedule is not posted. I don't know exactly when the Simcoe campus is gonna post the schedules, um, but once you once they do, you should be able to see it on WebAdvisor. I know the schedules just started going out in the last week or two, so maybe Simcoe just hasn't got theirs up yet. Um, as long as you're fully paid and all of that, then, and you should be able to see it um, once it's ready to go. Okay, just gonna answer two more questions. One about buying books. Do not buy any books until you get here because all of your books have to be purchased at the college store. If you are already in London, just go to the college store, tell them your program. They will give you the list of books that you have to get. A laptop, you should wait until you know what, the, what kind of uh, laptop you need because it has to be compatible with whatever the class is um, wired for. And no third party insurance, that's not necessary. Your Mokia insurance is comprehensive for glasses, for dental, for medical. You do not need to buy any additional insurance. And one other thing I just want to add about books is it's also maybe a good idea to attend your orientation and maybe even the first couple days of school um, just to make sure that you know exactly which materials your teachers want you to have. Nobody's going to expect you to have all the books ready to go on day one. Um, so you may want to go and listen because they might even tell you that, you know, some of the books are available in the library and you don't need to find those books necessarily if they're just being used for um, small sections of the course so they would give you so your orientation will give you a good overview as to what is really really important um, and what you really need to buy and maybe some other things that you can rent or borrow and I just want to say you know with um, with London London is a beautiful city London is a friendly city and the only way to really learn to live in London and have fun is also by not by making new friends not by staying with just the people you know and we do encourage you, once you're here on campus, try getting involved with volunteering with different groups in the city, different groups on campus. There are many clubs on campus. There's a Chinese club, there's a chess club, there's a Korean club, there's, I know the Indian students have a lot of groups also that they have formed. Get involved with groups on campus where you could meet new people. Get involved with the churches. If you are a person who goes to the temple, you go to the mosque, you go to the cathedral. The churches also have a lot of activities. So there are a lot of things that are free in the city. But if you arrive, in, arrive at Fanshawe and your only goal is to stay with the people who came from your own home country, you really don't get a chance to experience the city and to grow to, to your full potential. So I know since you said two more questions, but the two really important ones just came through. So these will be our final two questions. So one thing we've already said this, um, but we're still getting asked. If your visa is going to be late, you need to contact agents or, or whoever, you know, you got the offer letter through. Um, a lot of programs will not allow you to start late. Some programs, if you are not here on day one, they will not accept you. So you do need to have written permission from our manager um, if you are going to be coming late so you really do need to follow up with your agent uh, with us um, with with our admissions teams if you know your visa is not going to be there on time you need to defer if you show up late we will not be able to have you start your program with unless you have that written permission so it's really important that if you are thinking you're going to be late if you're going to miss those deadlines you've been given to arrive you need to be in contact with the college um, another, just another one less serious question is, um, 
it, like if you're in a program like culinary skills, um, your uniforms and equipment is not covered in the tuition fee. So do expect that you're gonna have to buy those things um, when, you, when you arrive. And I, if you arrive late and you get to the airport, just to add to Laura's comment, you can also get turned back because they know the start of class and there are students who arrive five days late. And I have known of cases where immigration would not allow them in because they know they're, they're already late for classes. So that's a pretty serious uh, thing to think about. Am I late? And I, do I have permission to be here late? Yeah, that's really important. We don't want to see you show up and have either immigration turn you around or us have to send you back as well. Um, there is still on the screen is the thing for questions. So if you do have any further questions, you can always email them to international at and we'll make sure that you get your answers. Uh, it's great talk. Well, great talking to you guys today and we look forward to seeing you all in September. Okay. Wish you all the best with your arrival and your time at Fanshawe. Thank you.